what happened. First of all, it looks like there's evidence that bin Laden and Hussein were working together. Now, what I'm going to say applies to the left, but it could just as easily apply to the right, in this case, the left. Anybody that said there was no connection, now you have to say you were wrong. Free speech is fine in this country, but when you're very vocal, it turns out you're wrong. You have to go on TV and say, I was an ass, okay? <laughs> now, nothing eventful happened to me this weekend because I had to go to a gig with Keith, Keith Robinson at Drexel U in Philly. He takes me... <laughs> oh. He takes me to Roy Rogers because he's the king of the turnpike. He's from Philly. We go to the Roy Rogers. I think it was managed by the Bloods. I'm not sure. <laughs> I was one of the three white people there. And you know when you're the only white person with your black friend, they have to nod some secret signal to the blacks to let them know you get a pass? Like, What's up, man? <laughs> yeah. No, we don't notice that. Anyway. <laughs> then we get to Philly, his hometown. He starts bragging about it. This is my town player, you know? <laughs> Your town, good. It looks like Grand Theft Auto 2, all right? There's, there's, guys, there's guys in Revolutionary War dress selling crack behind the Liberty Bell. The Rocky statue has lesions on his face. Um, the, uh, the exit where Keith grew up doesn't even have a number. It's just a, it's a picture of a white guy with a line through him. But stupid Keith, he thinks it's beautiful because it's all he knows. He's from there, you know? He's driving me out like we're in a gondola going through the Venice canals, you know? It's like, oh, Santa Lucia, hey. There's a Piazza San Marco, Santa Lucia. There's Iverson's posse shooting it out with a navigator full of Jamaicans. Oh, uh, you know. All right, let's start the show. Now, I want a good, clean show, Keith. Am I lying about any part of that awful trip, except we saw Kyle Grooms, another nobody like us, in the highway, Roy Rogers? You are, you know what, the fact you forgot to tell him that you didn't pay me for that gig yet. <laughs> He's right. You cheap ass. I didn't, I didn't tell you, they screwed me on the money on that gig. It's not as much as I said it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, look. Senator John Kerry, Howard Dean, and President... It was Friday night, folks. You want me to pay him today? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, <laughs> John Kerry, Howard Dean, and President Bush have all declined public financing of their presidential campaigns, allowing them the freedom to raise and spend without constraint. Should there be a cap on the amount that each candidate can spend? I, I think that um, everybody should have, it should be a cap. Everybody should start with the same amount of money. Because it's unfair, because George Bush is like the George Steinbrenner of the bunch. He has unlimited spending. He can spend it whatever he wants. And because it, it's his famous friends, rich friends. Right. That's not fair to somebody like Al Sharpton. Who does he have? <laughs> Tawana Broly? <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia from Sylvia Soul Food? I don't, I don't think there should be. <laughs> I think there should be a cap at all unless they all give them like the same ridiculous low amount of money like they each get 20 bucks and see what they can do with that right you know what i mean like but that's what i say what about a cap for like 500 million dollars <laughs> what first of all <laughs> you know that way it's even you know <laughs> well first of all, you're from maryland aren't you yeah Baltimore? yeah Ugh. why don't you yeah. two talk about that stupid awful part of it Go ahead. What? <laughs> it, costs, it costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money to trick people into voting for you. You know, yeah. it takes a lot of cash. Well, what I'm saying is this. What about my idea, which is a great idea, if you do like the old stump speech where you just have like Lincoln, like, what you got is the stump and then you owe nobody any money, the finance to the security, you know, maybe you owe the beavers a few things. Or you just give 10 free hours to each candidate on TV, 10 free hours where they just tell you plan. No debate. You go up and say, here's what I'd do if I were in the country. Then everybody does it. No campaigning. No going around places. Nobody wants to listen to this. Thanks, folks. Wait a minute. No, you're I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I believe the people wanted to say, Kyle, once again, you've got a solution, not a problem. Now, what you complain about this? What the fact that you said 10 hours? 10 hours. Why do you need? If you need, if your person has to take 10 hours, I don't want to vote for this guy. 10 hours over the course of the election season. Why not a debate though? Because in within no debate, 10 hours, you can just be lying, and you can't. You'd be lying. During the debate too. Yeah, but someone can at least call you on it. No, but also, what about can. people's? What about people's right? You know, if you like want, you know, it's your free yeah. speech. You want to support a candidate. You want to have your. I mean, first of all, this this election is a little interesting because they all have their money. They represent sort of all the different ways you could have a lot of money. Like Dean has all the gay money. 
you know, all the uh, all the internet money, and then uh, Bush has all the money from the corporate interest, and then uh, uh, Kerry, his wife's money, because she's the, the heiress to the Heinz fortune, so he's got all the ketchup money, and, you know, I think the ketchup people deserve to be heard, too. Yeah. yeah Every like time you open a bottle of Heinz, this bastard gets 44 seconds. <laughs> no, go ahead. No, I'm just saying I like ketchup. I think Greg met a great point. Yeah, ketchup. Although, I look to one. 43 million Americans live in America without health insurance, and the number's rapidly increasing because of soaring costs, job losses. What do you guys have to say about that? Well, you know what? Uh, Who's got no health insurance on this show, first of all? You? Why do you pick me out? Because I'm black. Like, <laughs> that's racism. No, yeah. I have no insurance. I have no insurance. Okay, I, thank no. you. But that, I didn't like how you just point. I don't have insurance, but you didn't have to point it out. Man. <laughs> it's annoying. You know what? But, but you know what happened, though? What we used to do, when I, like in the 80s and the early 90s, you used to can borrow somebody else's medical cards. <laughs> you, know, you, you could do that. Yo, let me borrow your card. Get knee surgery for a minute. I'll be right back. And you can, <laughs> You could do that. I mean, you can't that. <laughs> Would it work for like a pap smear? Everything. Uh, you can get everything. I need, Becky, I need baby has something to say. Yeah, I need insurance just simply because I'm annoying everyone around me constantly. I think I have a tumor. You know, I, can you check this? I have a lump here. It's not even in my breast. It's not exciting for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, you know, you need health insurance in this country. It's ridiculous that we can't insure the uninsured here. It's totally But, but you know what? People don't. You know what I mean? And also in Canada, it works in Canada because everyone there dies of boredom. <laughs> yes. That's a good point. All right, look, let's talk about the steroid thing with baseball, 5 to 7 percent. Yeah, we all know the story. The results, uh, what about baseball? Steroid use, 5 to 7 percent. Let's get to it. More steroids. They should have steroids with every meal. Make that shit exciting. No, you know, no, get out no. there, get the crap out of each other. No. Baseball is boring. I want them to tear steroids. each other apart. Why? You gotta ban the steroids. Because of the Orioles? No, no. Senators? That hurt a little bit. That I'm hurt sorry. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, you gotta ban it. It's not fair to all the records and everything going on. You You're know? right. It breaks all. Yeah. Now look at Barry. That We're not saying who's on steroids, who's not. Just look yeah. at Barry Bonds 10 years ago first. There he is 10 years ago. He looks great. He's ripped. Jesus. It's kind of almost remarkable in comparison. And now look at him today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's that's his age. That's more age. If you look at me before thing 30. Is that's, <laughs> that's how black guys age. They get more ripped. Yes, that's, that's exactly. I'm sick of it. No, you got it eat. wouldn't bother me if they ate healthy. This is what they eat. And they're still ripped. <laughs> Sons of bitches. <laughs> Hate it. All right. Coming up, some semiotic symbols for you to deconstruct. In other words, commercials. We'll be right back. <laughs> You really, Judah, the money you make with Eddie Murphy movies and everything else you do, you can't give the guy back his 50. At least I only did the gig Friday. You vote him $50 since the blackout. You haven't paid. Why? Yeah. I, well, I, the blackout happened. When I was supposed to do the show last time, the blackout right. happened. I remember. I had no money. Couldn't use the ATM. I had to get out of town. So Keith was very cool, and he lent me uh, 50 bucks. Um, but he said uh, it was okay if I didn't pay him back until the next blackout. So, <laughs> so I just, uh, didn't have a chisel. <laughs> Plus, he probably uh, he probably spent it all on clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying, right? I'm kicking your ass, Greg. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, look. The new Abby and Fitch catalog once again features the naked teen angle <laughs> for the 20th. Take a look at this piece, page that talks about group sex, okay? See that? It says the menage a trois is not an uncommon arrangement. Pleasant, safe alternative to this is group masturbation, sometimes called a circle j or a Jack and Jill off. Uh, <laughs> All right, so we took the catalog to the streets. Let's see what people said. What's the toplessness? Is this okay? Nice, bare male ass. He's got some fine looking brothers in here, some good looking. This is a gay man. <laughs> this is a gay man. What's a Jack and Jill off? Catholic girls do not do Jack and Jill. This here I would not put in the clothing catalog. No. I think the big problem with this is that they, as everything else, is not so much the nudity, because this, this is the cleanest thing kids can see today, sadly. You know, it's the least perverted. Look, it's nature, you know. There's a little nudity, but, you know. When I, uh, I just think they should use ugly, like real high school people, like, you know, a couple of fatties, maybe uh, a couple of bad circumcisions, a d***less wonder or something. Or, you know. Maybe a, as we used to say in the 70s, a pimplehead wizard. You know, he's called some kid a pimp. That was when the who were big, so, you know. Anyway, uh...
Going back? No, no. It's uh, I've seen better cor porn at uh, Old Navy or corn. One of the two. Doesn't matter. Oh, come on, people! <laughs> Jesus Christ! I'm no, back. no. Here's the here's the whole thing. I went in to get this catalog at Abercrombie and Fitch, and it's right there with the cardigans. And I go up, I take the wrapper off, and I start looking at it, and. This little sales girl comes over to me and she goes, I'm sorry, miss, but you can't look at that in the store. There's kids here. <laughs> and I'm like, it's on display with the cardigan. Yeah. Like, I'm not, you know, in the adult section of a video store. It's there with the cardigans and, and the wool sucks. Yeah. Well, I, I also, yeah. I, don't, I don't get what the problem is with it because they say that, you know, gr they talk about group masturbation, right? So at least they're, they're getting out the safe sex message. That's what they said, yeah. yeah. It's got a message. <laughs> I, think it, I don't think it's that outrageous. I mean, I just, that's their Christmas catalog. I was just looking at their new Hanukkah catalog, and that's like, <laughs> it's like out of control, you know? There was this, like, bagel vagina thing going on. Just, Can't you know, they have this kind of stuff with Rockaware and Sean John? Or, you know, I this stuff. Right. I can't. It's you can't like, you don't watch a discussion in the black neighborhoods. No. Abercrombie and Fitch. No. Like well, you're, no. you're right. I mean, that is the whole message of Abercrombie and Fitch, right? That if you're not attractive, life sucks. I mean, and that, that is true. Right. So, <laughs> but they right. really don't, they don't even, you know, if you go to Abercrombie and Fitch, first of all, if you're over like 24 years old, you look like a pedophile freak walking in there in the first place. <laughs> but they, their top waist size is 36 waist is the top waist size. And they have it like way up high. So it's like, climb fatty, you know, just a mock you. <laughs> <laughs> but you looked at that before and it's like, there is no clothing in there until middle way to three quarters of the way through. Like there's right. nothing it's in there until, like, until the very end. It's kind of like. First of all, how old do I have to get before this stops being funny? <laughs> <laughs> all right, look. A seven-year-old boy will go on trial this week for molesting a five-year-old girl. His defense likened the act of playing doctor. Now, if that was around when I was a kid, I would have been like a court TV star. But what's next? Like kids playing army? They're gonna have war crimes tribunals? You know. <laughs> Can a seven-year-old be guilty of committing this heinous crime, Keith? No, like you said, I, me, plenty of times. I was such a, I mean, I was a pervert. Damn. Yeah. I mean, I still am, but I. And, right. Oh, In those days, you stood out. Yeah. I stood out. I was. I got a. Me too. For that. My mother once caught me this girl Sharon D. Well, I don't want to say her last name or get sued, but no, I was like this was back when I used to in Flatbush, and I was like, you know. Digitally, whatever it was, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was like six, she's like five, Digital. you know? Digital. And my mother's like, ah, you're on the window, and it traumatized me for years, ma. You never heard of like Dr. Spock or like not? Just why could you just walk away? I admit it was a shocking thing to see your son finger. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. folks, I was six. It wasn't last year. Calm down. That's, that's what happened. Like, in, I was six, same age. I was in first grade. And I remember just whipping my penis out and showing it to this little girl. I'm like, mm, take a look at this. You still do that. <laughs> did you make that face when you did it? That's, no, that's yeah. the way I did it. I was like, you know. <laughs> She beat the hell out of me. That's what she <laughs> a fifteen-year-old is the only pervert in the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like porn directing the but whole why thing. Why do they not kill child molesters in this country? That's the other thing that bothers me. If you're child molester, I totally understand it. That you can't help yourself, but kill him because you're not going to be a productive member of society. Kill child no. molesters? Yeah. What would you yeah, but not the seven-year-old. He's what? an operator. He's just who gets raped in jail, then, right? No, I was saying, who would, you, who would you confess to if they killed the old child? <laughs> who would confess to? Judah, why don't you leave something? Leave us an inspirational note, Judah. What do you think? I think uh, that seven-year-old kid should get the death penalty. <laughs>